Hey, this is Eric from Catching Light. Hey, this is Hemp. Hey, this is Glenn. Hi, I'm Steve-O. Hey, this is Drew Hines with Hindsight Imagery. This is Matt Callahan at Digimati Photographic Services. Hey, this is Jason, and welcome to Tales from the Pit. Hello and welcome to Tales from the Pit, the behind the lens access for concerts and photography. We are photographers for New Hampshire's largest outdoor venue. And today we have a very special guest. It's part two with photographer Jen Devereaux. We hope you enjoy the episode. All right, I'm gonna close So Jen, my... you said that you also do wedding photography as well. Do you do any other type of photography besides concert photography? Um, I do like, um, like, family pictures and engagements and things like that. So, I mean, anything to like, you know, people, I don't do anything other than people. I'm not a big landscape photographer. I don't do um, anything like that, but um, I don't, I would do sports. Like if it was brought to me, I do sports. My husband would love it. If I could shoot the Buffalo bills. I mean, nice. that's <laughs> you know, people. Um, You're the people person, Glenn. <laughs> I know. I know. See, I'm, I'm a landscape guy myself and I'm, I love, you know, getting out there in the woods and ocean and whatever but yeah the people oh, thing is eye for great. i'm right with you jen give me the people i want to see i want to see faces beautiful faces yeah i'm i'm leaning towards doing something in the nature so, so let's let's dive into some of these shots here so as as we mentioned many times your shots are incredible both in the your composition and you know mm. your uh, your eye your the 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 capturing the moments and the, the, the just your editing as well so excellent shot so go ahead and tell us about some of these shots here sure um well this one's afi um i shot this at buckhead theater in atlanta and the cool thing about this venue is um you can shoot from the pit but they also allow you to um shoot from the balcony they have this really cool like balcony area where fans can sit but then there's this drop down where you can actually shoot from the balcony and not get in the fans way so i was able to get past the first three songs and shoot this shot which was um when davy went into that the crowd and, and obviously people went nuts and i'm not really good at wide shots or crowd shots so i was really just happy that i could get this shot um because it just you could just see how like how, how much the fans just wanted to be there and be close to him. So it was really awesome. Nice. Nice. I'm just going to scroll. Yeah. That vantage point is cool. I like that. Well, I thought I was going to scroll through. Let me click on the next one here. <laughs> Do the pink show. Oh my God. That pink shot. <laughs> yeah. Oh this my God. Backstreet boys here. Yes, this is at iHeart Festival. And so one of the biggest accomplishments that to date from I, I feel like for my career has been able to shoot the iHeart Festival because that was something that I always wanted to do. Um, again, Todd O. Young helped me out with that one because he's he's one of their okay. official photographers. Yep. Um, I got on actually um, I, I started editing um, live editing with them. And what that is, is basically like um they'll have their official photographers take pictures they'll have a card runner and they'll bring it back to us in what's called the war room and we'll edit the pictures like really fast for them um so oh, they can cool. put it on socials and have like everything kind of like in the moment for socials um and so i did that for a couple of years and the way that i got onto that gig um was um Catherine tyler who's an amazing photographer. If you ever go look at her work, um, she does amazing portraits. Her and her twin sister um, do the Tyler twins. They're amazing. Um, anyways, she was the photo editor and she had reached out to me. I was shooting for um, my friend, Karen. Um, she it was the editor for this outlet I was shooting for. She had her own outlet, Music Tour Reviews, and she was based out of Las Vegas. And so I was shooting here in the South, but I was up, you know, it was for her, her site that was based in Vegas. So Catherine Tyler um, found some of my images and she thought that I was based in Vegas because of the, the pictures on that site. So she asked me if I would want to come out and edit. And I was like, well, yeah, of course I'd love to. And then 
I got to the, I was like, so do you guys pay for travel? And she's like, well, are you not in Vegas? And I was like, I was like, no, I'm in Mississippi. And she's like, oh, okay, well, we'll fly you out anyways. And she took uh, a chance on me. So, um, so I got to edit for a couple of years. And then I reached out one year, um, this, not this past year, but the year before last. Um, and um, I was like, look, if you ever need a photographer, I know you, you've got a slew of great, amazing, talented photographers, but if ever comes up, if you need a photographer, you know, I'd love to do it. Well, she was like, well, we wish we could, you know, accommodate every of our photographers because most of the editors are photographers um, to shoot. And um, she's like, right now, we just kind of like, just need to edit. I was like, that's fine. Cause I loved editing the team, the photo team at iHeart. It's so much fun. They'll like order in and out, they'll order pizzas <laughs> while we're editing. We get to watch the show. They let us go mm -hmm. out on the floor to go watch a performer. If we like a performer, even though we're supposed to be like really quick in editing. Um, but um, as it turns out, I was supposed to be coming that year for editing. And she was like, hey, are you still interested in um, shooting the show? And I was like, absolutely. She's like, well, we, it actually turns out we need a photographer. So um, I, think, I think Todd had put in a good word too. Um, so I got to shoot that year. And this shot was when Backstreet Boys had come out on stage. Um, and of course there's Brian Luttrell and like, um, I'm on near the, um, uh, what do you call it? I always forget the word. The, the part of the stage that juts out. What's it called? The thrust. The thrust, yes. Oh, so gosh, I'm yeah. like trying to stay out of the way of their live cameras because they have they have video cameras that are going constantly. So I'm kind of cornered up over here on the thrust and he just happens to turn around at me and start singing at me. And I was like, okay, I got to shoot this. Um, so, I mean, that was just a cool experience because, I mean, who? everyone loves the Backstreet Boys. I mean, even if you don't like boy bands, you got to love the Backstreet Boys. Awesome. That's so cool. Let's go to the next one. Oh, this is this is Bullet from Valentine. This is Matt Tuck of Bullet from Valentine. Um, one of my favorite bands, and probably one of the bands that I have photographed the most. Um, I have a lot of favorite bands, if you haven't noticed. But Bullet, um, the whole reason I got my first credential was because I, I was such a huge fan of Bullet from a Valentine. I was going to take the leap and try that being my first um, show was a taste of chaos because Bullet was playing there. Um, of course, I love Avenge, but I love Bullet more. Mm -hmm. um, so um, they are my first credential show and also my most photographed band. Um, but this one was actually taken at um, uh, Iron City in, in Birmingham, Alabama. And if you've ever been at that venue, it's a it's not it's not a huge venue and it's not um, a super tiny venue. It's like in between. And they have a staircase like off to the side. So after I'd shot the first three songs, they, I was able to um, take pictures from the side. And that's how I got this shot of Matt Tuck. And, you know, it's, he's one of those type of performers that likes to, he's usually like in his microphone, even though he's playing guitar. So it's really hard when you're in the pit to get a good shot of him. So being able to shoot from the side when he had pulled back from the microphone, I was just really glad I, I was able to get that shot. Nice. Now, are you are you traveling a lot to other locations for shoots, or is it just occasionally? Yeah. So before I actually was a house photographer, I, I traveled a lot. I mean, I would travel to Atlanta, um, which is like six and a half hours away. I would travel to Birmingham, which was like three hours away. Anywhere I could go to shoot um, bands that were obviously not coming anywhere near me, um, I would travel. I mean, I put in miles for sure. Um, so this one was a, it was about a three hour drive. It wasn't that bad. Nice. There you go. There's three kids and a husband and you're doing this. That's yeah, you have to remarkable. Have a good spouse. <laughs> That's <laughs> something to be said for that. You gotta have some major support. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Facts. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. 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 So Foo Fighters. Yes. This was actually taken at Welcome to Rockville Festival in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, what was cool, what was well, it was difficult because if you've ever shot Foo Fighters, at least every time I've shot them, they want you to pick a side in the pit. And mm. I'm sure, as you know, like that, that limits your creativity with getting random shots, different shots. Um, so you can only hope that the, um, the artist comes near you or the band members switch so you can get different views. Um, this was center on. And the only way that I could get this shot was they had like a tape on the ground um, of where we could stand and we couldn't go past. So I was literally had my feet on the tape and was like <laughs> turning my camera and shooting to try to get that center shot. Um, so it took some, cause he moves all over the place. So it was yep. just pure luck to get him in the center like that. 
Well done. Yeah, we know what it's like to kind of get positioned in the pit. It's tough sometimes. Yeah. And if you're not tall, it makes it even <laughs> harder. Look and at I'm the not. contrast in that. That is freaking wow, beautiful. And I see that beautiful. behind you as well. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm a again, I'm a big garbage fan, so I have a lot of favorite bands. I grew up in the nineties, so a lot of nineties bands are mm. also my favorite bands. So garbage, Shirley Manson, Icon. Um, I've shot her several times. Um, actually the first time I shot um the band was on their 20 years queer tour to celebrate the 20th anniversary of their um first album um which is self-titled garbage, but everyone knows that the song queer came off that album. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember coming out, I went to, I went all the way to Houston to shoot that show. And because that's how much I love this band. And I came out of that pit in tears because I was like, I got nothing good. So oh, I've had those nights. Yeah, oh, I know what that's <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I got the opportunity to shoot them again. And this was at an amphitheater. And so um, they were, it was a Blondie slash garbage tour. So they were co-headlining. Um, I was so glad that garbage was first because they, um, there was still a little sunlight left. Um, and it was just, um, I had rented because it's such a, a huge um, band for me to shoot. I rented a, like um, a really, uh, what was it? I think it was like a, I think it was either a 400 millimeter lens or a 300 millimeter lens. I can't even tell you. I'm not a gearhead, so I don't know. I just, I was like, where can I get like really close up shots? And I was like, let me rent that last minute. Um, so I rented that lens and um, it just so happened that she walked right where there was some smoke, which led for a great background. Mm -hmm. There was sun still shining. Um, and one of my goals is to always shoot portraits of bands. And since I'm not able to do that just yet, um, I want my images to look like portraits. So I felt like this kind of like, um, kind of like gave that portrait type style. So I really liked that. Yeah. It really gives you that, that feeling, especially with the light coming in from her and then the backlighting. And that's really good. Thank you. It's perfect. It, and, and as I said in, in, in previous episodes, when we talked about some of our shots, the ability to be focused on the eye is really important. Really yeah. amazing and, and you know concert photography. If you can pull that off, hats off to you. Excellent job. Yeah, they, and it's really hard. I will say, like that's a really hard thing to do, especially when people, you know, artists are constantly moving, and then you your camera sometimes just wants to focus on that microphone. Yep. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> around, but a lot of times it wants to focus on that microphone, depending on how far out you are. And that lens, I was not used to it. It was super heavy, um, so. To not to shake because I, I don't even know if I had like a um, monopod on it at all. I think I was just holding it and like bracing with my <laughs> elbows. Um, so to get it in focus was um, it was hard. <laughs> excellent. Excellent shot. Mm, pull it off. All right. <laughs> okay. This is. <laughs> That's Janelle Monet. So mm, yep. this was at Voodoo Fest. I want to say two years ago. Um, she had a really cool setup. She had that throne. Again, it just happened to be, you know, especially at festivals or any time shooting outdoors, you just don't know if it's going to be like super sunny, if the sun's going to be shining on them, if there's going to be clouds. Um, at this point, the sun was somewhat coming down. So I was like, it's either going to blow out everything or it's going to be a, a great, like, you know, just lit set up and it just happened to be really well lit um and not blowing out everything so i was really happy that the sun was somewhat almost down at this point so we could see you know a little bit more detail and things and she had she had a um a riser and that's what that throne is on so it gave way for me to be able to um get a better shot of her and then also voodoo fest is very like there's a lot of photographers in the pit um, and I'm taller, so I like to stay in the back. So I'm usually, I, I usually have my camera with my lens like over people's heads. So they're shooting and, and they don't know that the ca my camera is above their head. Mm. So, um, but thank goodness she had a riser because that made it, my job a little bit easier. It looks like it's in a studio. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, That's, really like, does. Honestly, what I, my goal is to have like my live images look like portraits. That's, that's my ultimate goal. Yeah. That's na You nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> There you go. Jane's Addiction, Dave Navarro. Oh, I love him. Um, this is also at Voodoo Fest. Now, I will say that this one was, I want to say, like, I'm terrible at the years. I want to say 20, 
2013, 2012, maybe? No. Yeah, maybe it was that long ago. Um, but I'm a big um, Ink Master fan. Um, I love Ink Master. I yeah. love Ink Master. So I'm also, <laughs> a, you know, I've, I've shot um, Jane's Addiction a, a couple of times at Voodoo Fest. Um, but this year, because it's Voodoo Fest, they, the artists tend to um, dress up because it's on Halloween weekend. Um, and this is him dressed as Adam Ant. Um, so, um, it was really cool to see the stripe. And then he had obviously the contacts and the eyes, which really mm. kind of made it pop. Um, so yeah, I really do. I'm a big fan of Dave Navarro because of Ink Master. <laughs> so for me looking at this, you did such a good shot, a uh, good job with, you know, the contrast and the focus. I can actually see the white tattoos on his lower chest or his lo sort of belly area. I didn't even notice that, but I do see what you're saying. Do you think those I, are white tattoos or do you think that maybe he got those lasered? Oh, may, yeah, I don't know, but I'm like, that's you know, amazing yeah. that you can and see that. Knowing, knowing what I know about him, those could be branded. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think he has any regrets on his tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's amazing detail, though. Thank you. Very I could good. I could geek out about Ink Master and how that, that show's affected me, so... You know, I only have one tattoo, but like, I'm such a, like, I'm so like judgmental about tattoos. I'm like, oh, they totally blew out that line right there because I watched that right? show and know like all the criticism they have on those. So I don't want to, I don't want to take this off into another tangent with, yeah, yeah. with Ink this Master, John, but I could, maybe I'll, maybe I'll DM you and we'll talk about getting yeah, tattoos and Ink Master because I could absolutely geek out about that show. <laughs> So uh, this is you on stage rocking out, right? Yeah, I wish. <laughs> this is actually um, in an alleyway. And I had my um, my middle daughter, Clover. Um, she's 18 now. But she, I was like, I need you to take a picture. Because they needed one for actually for the Nikon panel. And I, I don't ever get behind the lens. So um, I didn't have any like professional shots. So I had her take this picture. And you can actually see you can see how much damage I have in my gear. Look at the, the grip on that lens. It's like yeah. almost coming off. Yeah, mine does the same thing. That's a 24 to 70. Yeah. Well, that's 7,200. Uh, 7,200. I'm sorry. I actually had to re um, replace that one because at one of the shows at the Fillmore, I was pushing my way through the crowd to get to the, um, the pit for one of the shows and this drunk guy, I don't know if he did it on purpose or what, but he was pushing me thinking I was just trying to get in front of him. And then like when I finally got past him, he pulled, I think he pulled my backpack and my lens fell out and it busted. Oh, so oh. Uh, no. Lens, so. no, we never see drunk people at our venue. No, uh, no, no. We see <laughs> all never. drunk people at our much. Venue. <laughs> never. There's never any drunk people. So you know, no so stories about people in the pit with drunk and yeah, all that. No, we don't have any of that stuff. So well, you know, that's cool. uh, real quick. Let me ask you about that. So what? So for you, you know, obviously we're a bunch of uh, dudes, but for a female photographer, what sort of challenges do you have to face, or do you have any? Is it I mean, it's been like pretty good so far. I mean, I. In the past, I've had like a lot of like just rude comments like, uh, oh, which band member are you with and things like that. <laughs> but like, I mean, I can hold my own in the pit. Like, um, th like that guy, I probably could have mouthed off to him, but I didn't. And I just kind of kept going. But I mean, I haven't had any like physical like um, issues. I, I mean, I've had like where a security guard kind of shoved me into a barricade once for no reason. But I mean, hmm. It yeah. happens. Like they're doing a job. I'm doing a job, but I don't know. I can hold my own. I feel like. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. I, I would suspect, you know, knowing what I know about, you know, uh, you know, sometimes we, we know a lot. Of, I mean, we're all friends in, at our venue, but we have a lot of uh, other outside photographers coming in for different publications or whatever. Yep. And mo I'd say 90% of those people are cool, but there's always that 10% that are just total a-holes and yeah. they're just, They'll, yeah. they'll trip you to get a shot if they have to or whatever. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm just curious to, how, to see how that is for, you know, for you and for other locations and stuff like that. Well, in New Orleans, I will say we have such a good like community of photographers. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I haven't had a lot of issues in New Orleans. Um, you know, at festivals and stuff, I have had some people, you know, they, like you were saying, you know, they, they want to get that shot. They'll, they'll Hail Mary and throw their camera in front of you. And I mean, luckily I'm, like I said, I'm taller. So I, I stay at the back anyways. Um, and I can move around. I have no problem moving around, but there are some people that, you know, 
it, it shouldn't be that serious. Like we're all right. there to do it. Like, mm-hmm. and you know, just keep moving. Like we can all get different shots. Just don't, and you know, don't, don't hurt it for someone else. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So we got Johnny five here. Um, or John five, sorry. Um, tell us about this one. This is when Rob Zombie actually came to the Fillmore. And again, that was a one-off from when they were, you know, on the festival circuit. So what's crazy about that is I actually shot um, Rob Zombie at Welcome to Rockville, drove back and shot Rob Zombie at the venue. Um, so um, this was really cool because I will say that Rob Zombie is one of those that is super difficult to photograph just because of the lighting. Um, it's really super difficult. He usually has very like um, static green lighting or static, static blue or red. So if there's no like white light to break it up, it's just, it just looks all the same color. Um, this one, I, I, I will say I had to edit this one pretty well. Um, but what's great about this one is his hair is white. So I was able to use a dropper tool um, to adjust the color that way. And it kind of automatically adjusted it the way I wanted it to. And the fact that he had a light on his guitar, it really kind of made the picture pop more. Mm-hmm. And then he has that glow stick in his mouth. So um, I was just glad I got that one. Now, a lot of the shots of Rob's, Rob Zombie did not come out very well. I had maybe one shot that I liked. Um, it's just a difficult, and he runs back and forth on stage. So you got to get him in the moment, and then you've also got to get him when the light hits him just right. I think I had one good shot of Rob Zombie that I had. And again, it was at a festival um, when when the, the sun was coming down. So I got to see him a little bit in the daylight. So you didn't have that static color on him. Um, so yeah, that Rob Zombie's just really difficult to photograph, but this one of John five, I was able to get, and he was like super close to me too. Cause they have risers. And so, um, our pit at the venue is like really close to the stage. Like it's, it's, it's not that far up. So you're like right there almost on top of them. Um, and depending on the show, you might not have enough space to pull back and get a shot. So this one was a really close one. That's awesome. Rob was the last show I shot summer of 19 and I have not been in the venue since <laughs> other than our promo video. None of us have. Yeah. So that's, that was your last show that you shot before. Yep. COVID. Actually, oh, wow. no, it's the, that's wrong. We did WMUR. Yep. Oh, we were in the venue. You're absolutely <laughs> right. You're absolutely right. But the last show I shot was Rob. So you pull up that shot, that right. shot of John five. And I'm like, Oh, Aww. yeah, I got some cool <laughs> shots of those guys, too. <laughs> so tell us about this one. This one's Lizzo, and um, this was also at our venue. So our venue booked Lizzo before she blew up super big, and um, it was crazy because um, they ended up doing it for t- her show for two nights. Um, so this was her – was this her first or second night? I, no, this was a second night. Um, so the first night I shot her, um, I decided on the second night I wanted to go back to the soundboard and get some shots because um, it was so packed um, that I had to, to make a decision. And it was like, either I'm going to be at soundboard or I'm going to be in the pit because there's no way I'm going to get out of this to get to the pit in time for the songs to be over. Um, but I managed, I ended up at the soundboard and I was like, this is not going to work. The whole floors were shaking. I couldn't get a steady shot. Um, so I was like, I really want to get in the pit for this. Um, so I, I pushed as hard as I could to get to the front. Um, and I think I ended up using, we have a back way to get to the side of the stage. I think I ended up using that and kind of having to push through the crowd a little bit to get to the front, but I got this shot like right before the last song, the last of the three songs was up. Um, but I think what's so cool about this was just how big she was when she ended up performing at our venue and how packed it was. I don't think I'd ever seen it that packed. It was, it was awesome. And I got to take... Um, well, she was eight at the time. I got to take my eight-year-old daughter, Lux. She was a big Lizzo fan. So we got to take her. Um, so she was, a, she was, a, she was, she loved it. Oh, that was going to be my next question is, can you take your family, do you take your family to these? I don't usually, um, you know, it's weird because my, my kids have such different music tastes than, than I, I do and and the artists I shoot. So it's rare that they want to even go with me. Um, I think that I took Clover, my middle child, um, to see, she wanted to see Black Bear. So I took her to see Black Bear at our venue. 
Um, but a lot of times they're just like, they don't think I'm that cool because I'm not shooting a lot of the artists that they like. But Lizzo, Lux thought it was so cool that I brought her to see Lizzo. So I thought that was pretty cool. Nice. So there we go. Some Metallica. Yeah. So this was actually, um, that was my, my number one bucket list was to see Metallica. Um, it was such a huge, like the thrust was so long that you had to make a, a conscious decision that if you were going to go to try to get to another side to get a different shot, you were going to have to run because it was such a huge thrust that you had to run a good ways to get to the, the stage part. Um, I decided um, because I think another photographer had told me that the um, they were going to be on the thrust soon. So I was like, well, I'm going to go and make my shot and get my shot there. Um, and sure enough, they came out there. So I got this one. And um, I've been a Metallica fan for so long. So it was just, it was just really kind of surreal being able to photograph this band and, and then that, and it was outdoors. So they ended up doing, um, this was when they did the, um, the, the outdoor tour. Um, what do they call it? I get state it's stadium. And then there's the arena stadium, arena and stadium tours. I don't know if there's a difference, but this was the one where they were doing only outdoors. So like, it was a lot of like baseball fields. This was at the Atlanta brave stadium. Um, so, um, it was outdoors, which was really cool. So they had, of course the, the pyro and the fireworks and it was just awesome. Mm. Yeah, I'm totally cool ready on that one. That's... Like the backlighting. Yeah, I'm I'm down on the on the Metallica as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. So cool. I am so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> they are one of the bands that I would sneak on MTV. So. Oh yeah. This shot is amazing. I you see, you see. posted that one on your yep. Instagram here recently, and yep. that's a phenomenal shot. Thank you. That's um. Mm. So it's Miley Cyrus, of course. Now was at iHeart Festival. Wow. Um, I will say that I had moved around that the stage because um, I had, like I mentioned previously, they have these um, they obviously have uh, video people that are are is, is live streaming the whole show. So one of the rules is you you cannot get in the line of sight of the videographer. So I was moving to try to get away from the videographer's line of sight. And, um, she just happened to, I think she was facing the other way and I was like, okay, well, here's a shot. I'm just going to run around. And then she just kind of went, went down and then back bend. And I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in the right spot. So, um, <laughs> awesome. it was really cool to get that mm. shot. Mm. So cool. So is this, Perfect. so is this state, is this like a thrust and then like a, a circle piece? At the yeah, end. yeah, it almost the looks end like of the it. Thrust is like a circle, like a, at the end for, with gotcha. the high heart logo on it. So you, um, you can you can walk around the circle. However, um, there's a videographer that is very yeah. dead center with the the point of the heart, if you can see it. Um, and yep. so you cannot. It, there's no way to go past them. So you have to pick a side. And so I had to stay on that side pretty much the whole night. And Brian Friedman, who's another um, amazing photographer, he was on the other side of this. So he he got some amazing shots he's really good at getting good in center with the um pictures on the thrust without getting in the videographer's way um so if you go to his instagram go look at some of his shots he's got some some amazing ones from that night nice awesome yeah good great moment great capture there thank you <laughs> there we go pink Every, yeah she's a she's a bucket list of mine too this one is on your website this is uh you talk about your wanting to shoot a portrait <laughs> That's like you. That's like you designed it, lit it, put the camera <laughs> yeah, looking stuff directly up there, at her point, and there you go. She, exactly. she, um, she is when she comes out. She's on um this harness where she's doing like you know she can flip, do flips and such. Um, so I think at this point I don't. I think maybe they had just unhooked her. Um, and it was at the end of the song, so confetti comes out. Um, I will say that I had to edit this one to be as one as sharp as I wanted it because it wasn't, it wasn't that sharp in like from in camera. Mm -hmm. um, but I got to shoot her again when she came to new Orleans and she had a completely different outfit. It was a black sequin one sequence outfit. So to me, the silver one just really popped more. So I was really glad that I was able to get her on the first half of her tour where she had like the silver one. Mm. Looks awesome. I love Looking it directly at you too. <laughs> It felt, it felt like that. Yeah. That's awesome. Paramore, yep. So I'm a huge Paramore fan. Love Paramore. This was um, early, like this was um, 
what year was this? This had to have been 2009, I believe. So she looks very young. It's a while ago. Yeah. And this is not, when not that she's old now, but she's very young there. Yeah, and she doesn't like she doesn't have the orange color to her hair anymore. She does blonde right now. So mm -hmm. to get her in that um, era of her kind of like iconic like orange hair, that was really cool. Um, and I think they were doing it for some I forget the some car brand that they were doing. And it was the name of the tour. I can't remember. They had, I remember they had one of the cars outside. But um, this was also when I was shooting um, in JPEG. So um, all the images are not super editable. <laughs> um, pretty much what you see is what you got. Um, but I'm a huge Paramore fan. So getting to shoot them at all is, is always fun. I, I enjoy Paramore is probably one of my favorite bands to shoot just because I love the music. And um, she has so much energy. Um, also, um, Newfound Glory opened for them. So that was really cool to see Newfound Glory open. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the show a lot. This was at the New Orleans, um, which, uh, uh, the UNO Arena, which is a smaller venue. So the cool thing, I mean, this is your early, you're shooting in JPEG and it shows you, just, you know, you don't have a lot of editing. You know, there's not a lot of data shooting in JPEG for those that are watching. We always shoot in a raw format. So you have a, a compressionless, lossless image to mess with. And it, you have a lot of data when you're shooting in JPEG. You have very, very limited data for editing. So this just goes to show your skill set is there capturing it in camera because this is a beautiful shot just straight out of the camera. Thank you. And I, I mean, looking at it now, I mean, I definitely see with her foot being cut off and, you know, obviously in the background, he's a little, he's, he's pretty much blown out. And um, I mean, I could, I looking back, I wish I had shot in raw so I could, you know, edit a lot of things a little bit better. Um, you know, and I had photographers tell me, you know, you need to be shooting in raw. And I was like, well, I want to save room on my, my, <laughs> right. <laughs> you save room here and lose something else somewhere else. That's they right. Cards. I, I remember having those exact discussions around that time. Would have been, yeah. let's see, I start, I was at 11. So 11, 12, you know, yeah. when these guys all came on is when I had to up my game and, and yeah. start shooting raw and edit <laughs> night of and all that stuff because it was competitive. Some of these, these guys are, these guys that we work with, they're very talented. They've, they've driven me to be a better photographer. So, and Jen, you got that D850. That's, that's a, Love it. It was That's it gonna be me, what forty five megapixels? It took me a year of saving. I had a savings account um pre COVID and then like COVID hit and like we had a bunch of like bills we needed to pay and stuff. So um I had to put my savings away um and some bills and such and then my husband surprised me with it. Um he went back to school and um he surprised me with that camera. So I was very oh, much nice. happy what's about your, that. <laughs> what's your husband's name? Scott, his name's Scott. Scott. Way to go, Scott. Way, Way to go, go Scott. Scott. You're the man. <laughs> Kudos to you, buddy. <laughs> he's, he's my biggest champion. Um, I, you know, we talked about this, you know, having kids, you have to have someone that's just kind of in your corner the whole time. Yeah. And he's always been in my corner and supported me no matter what. Like he, there would be nights where I'd be gone for like an entire weekend for a show. Um, so it was, it's really good to have someone that really like supports you. And he, he supports me so much and I'm so appreciative of him. Awesome. That's very that's cool. great very good. job. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the late Chris Cornell, again, wow. another one I'm jealous about, one of my bucket list, unfortunately. This was actually two weeks before he passed. So oh, wow. Um, wow. Okay. Was at Welcome to Rockville. And I was I grew up on Soundgarden sneaking. That was another band I snuck on MTV. I remember when the Black Hole Sun <laughs> video came out, I was just into it. I was so into Soundgarden. And um, I had never photographed them. And so when I heard they're going to be playing at Welcome to Rockville, I shoot Welcome to Rockville pretty much every year. Um, so when I heard they're going to be at Welcome to Rockville, I was so excited. I went and I shot them for the first three songs, and then I, I remember vividly like going because um, it was such a huge crowd, and I don't like to get in the middle of a crowd. Um, I went. They had a Ferris wheel, and I went back to the Ferris wheel, and I just took my my camera bag and I put it on the ground. And I just laid down. Nobody was on the Ferris wheel. It was just I was by myself. I was just looking up at the Ferris wheel and listening to them in the background. It was just like so so surreal. I was just like, this is this is it. This is this is the life. And um, and then actually, I had I had sent these images. Um, I was working for a wire agency for that festival. I had submitted these to Wire. 
Um, and one of my goals was to always get into Rolling Stone. That was why I, I got into wires. I wanted to be in print. Um, but um, I, when he passed, it was kind of a, kind of like a bittersweet moment because my first image with rollingstone.com was this image. And, um, and I was just like, I wish it had been under better circumstances. I wish it was something that I could be happy about. Um, but this was, I, I'm such a big Soundgarden fan. So it was really hard. Like I really liked them and it was just really sad when I heard about what had happened. That's very bittersweet. Yeah. Uh, you, you, so congrats on the Rolling Stones, obviously, but yeah, that's, right. I can certainly understand that one. Um, I, 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 I'm glad you brought that up because that was one of the questions I was going to ask is I was going to talk to you about, ask you about the Rolling Stones and getting published in Rolling Stones, but I'm glad you brought that up. Well, I will say that I have not ever gotten, I don't, that, that I know of, and that's the one thing about wire. You just never know where your images are going. So you, you basically get like, um, you'll get a check in the mail when you're, when you, <laughs> um, after like you get hit a certain amount. Um, so I have no idea where a lot of my images go, but, um, my editor is really cool when he sees some of my images on like certain sites, like he'll send it to me. So Ollie had sent me this, um, image of, of it in Rolling Stone and it turned out like he was sending me so much. There were so many of my images that got used for like local newspapers and stuff for Soundgarden. And it was just like, ah, oh, I just wish it had been like something I could be, you know, super happy about. Mm -hmm. Um, it was just something that I was just like, ah, I just really am sad about like what had happened because I was such a huge Soundgarden fan. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but I mean, later on, I got a few more things in Rolling Stone, uh, Rolling Stone .com. I don't know if it was ever in print. I don't know if I ever got in print with Rolling Stone. So, um, but that's still a bucket list then. That's still a great, that's cool. a great achievement. Absolutely. So you got Taylor Swift here. Yeah. So again, one of the biggest productions was the Reputation Stadium tour. I got, I took this one in Nashville um, and every stop she brought out like um, a guest. I, we only got the first three songs, so we didn't get to take pictures of the guests, but she brought out um, Tim McGraw and Faith Hill at their stop at, uh, in the Nashville stop. So I thought that was really cool. Um, the, the funny thing about like this image is um, I spent $300 renting a 400 millimeter lens to get this shot because I knew how far I was going to be back. They had us so far back and we're on, um, it's at the, it's at the Nissan, Nissan stadium. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's on like the football field where they have like football. Um, yeah. And we are so far back that if I had just taken my 7,200 lens, she would still look like an ant. So I'm glad I brought, I got the 400 millimeter, but that is even heavier than the, the lens I had for garbage. I literally had to have a monopod for that. It was yeah. such an ordeal. And so after each of the openers, um, we had to walk this trek all the way back after each time. And I had this huge lens attached to the monopod having to trek all the way through um, with it. So, but I mean, it was worth it. I mean, I was able to get a closer shot um, than probably anybody that was not using like a 400 millimeter, but I mean, I built some arm muscles that day. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Especially when, and, and I don't know how it was for you, but on some of those hot shows, when you're lugging all this stuff and maybe you have a backpack and stuff like that, whew, it's rough. It is. You have to work for it. I will say when I was walking back through, uh, cause we had to walk through backstage, um, to where they would basically put us like at the end of a staircase. <laughs> it was like a door at the end of a staircase. Um, when we were walking back to that area, um, I did see Nicole Kidman and her kids. So that was really cool. Oh, um, cool. It's fun to see like a lot of the celebrities that come to these shows. That's awesome. Very cool. All right, I I had quite a career, Jen. I have to say for somebody that, that didn't have many stories, you did well. Well, thank you. Yeah, you. I mean, I, honestly, we could probably go in at least another hour because I got a million questions I could ask you about all the different scenarios you're in. But um, uh, so publications and stuff like that. Um, what's your what's your goal moving forward? Let's just say COVID kind of gets so things maybe things get back to normal or something like that. What 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 are you looking for next? What what's next for you? I really really 
bucket list is to do more portraits of, of artists. Um, I really want to do that. I want to get printed like portraits in magazines, like printed magazines. I mean, a lot of people think that print magazines are, you know, a dying breed or a dying, you know, thing. But I, I really do. I still look at magazines. I go to books a million. I look at the magazines. Um, so it's still a goal of mine. I mean, I got printed the first time I know of that I got printed was in rock sound magazine for a show that I did. Um, it was Buku Fest is a festival in new Orleans. Um, and, um, from first to last, which I don't know if you're familiar with, um, uh, Oh gosh, what did, um, oh, I forgot. Um, he's a famous DJ, like, um, Oh gosh. Anyways, he's, um, it's, uh, what is it? I'm going to, uh, Brutus. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, he's a, like an actual, like, um, like Steve Oki and Oki or whatever, yeah, like, like, yeah. like Skrillex or something like that. Skrillex. Skrillex. Yeah. Yeah. So he actually had a band called from first to last and they reformed for this one show at Buku, after Buku Fest at, um, the Republic in new Orleans and rock sound reached out to me and was like, would you want to sh shoot it for the magazine? And I thought it was just going to be for online. And I was like, yeah, of course. Um, and so, um, the, the images got online and then they reached out to me like, is it okay if we print it too? And we'll send you a check. And I was like, uh, absolutely. So that was my first time being in print that I know of. So I was really excited about that, but I want to do more of that. Yeah. Awesome. And you know, we have no idea what's going to happen in 2021 for shows and stuff like that. Um, where do people go find more information about you? Um, I'm on Instagram, Gen D Photography. It's with two N's. And um, I occasionally get on Twitter. I'm not a huge Twitter person, but I'm on Instagram. Um, I don't really get on my Facebook business page too much, but find me on Instagram. That's the best place to, if you want to ever ask me a question, um, just follow me on there. I'm on there a lot. <laughs> do, you have, do you have a website as well, Jen? Yeah. So my website is um, jendephotography.com. Um, and um, you can, the front page will be music, but I do have like some of my wedding stuff mm -hmm. hidden in there. If you, if you search a little bit. Very good. Nice, nice, nice. You're very okay. inspiring, Jen. I we yeah. really appreciate you coming on. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was uh, you guys are so like I, I watched all the other episodes and I was just like so much. You guys are so professional. This looks so good. <laughs> stop it, us the way. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, stop, Jen. We oh, are. No. <laughs> I'll be thank dropping so f bombs. We're a bunch of the hillbillies from the Northeast here. Yeah. Uh, and, and I, you know, we haven't even released our early episodes yet, so you haven't seen us at our worst. <laughs> well, I, I, you guys had Paris on, and I love her work. Oh, yeah, she's, she's cool. Awesome. Yeah, Paris she's, is cool. Yeah, yeah, we like Paris a lot. We got to hang out with her this year. Yep, at the Smith, Smith and, and Myers, Myers drive-in show. Yep. Oh yeah. So y'all, have you guys been doing a lot of drive-in shows? I did three three of those shows this year. Hemp that couldn't make it. He did quite a few. I don't know how many, but yeah, and I think Jason, you did the Smith and Myers with us. Yeah, I not uh, many. I coach high school football, so d during the drive-in season, I was coaching. Oh, yeah. well, that's cool. Thanks. Yeah, we got a we got a little bit, but you know, not not what you used to. Yeah, I shot one drive-in show in New Orleans, and um, I will say that I'm impressed with how creative they have been getting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. trying to get shows back and do it safely yeah um, so i'm pretty impressed with the way and i also got to do um an outdoor show here in hattiesburg um they had saint paul and the broken bones and um and that was uh the lawn at lake terrace they did such a good job with that i'm mm -hmm. really impressed with how creative they're getting like did you see the um the one with um Oh, with the bubbles. It was. Um, <laughs> yeah. What band was that? Uh, I've shot them too. And I, I don't know why my brain isn't working. But anyways, um, that was that was super creative. So I like where they're going with things. I really. Yeah, they're doing whatever they can to get music out there, which is yeah. great. You know. Yeah. And people, you know, there's so many people that are just, you know, right now, like without jobs in the industry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just seeing how creative they're getting. Like, I know people that, that do pyro and they're doing like pyro for birthday parties and like um things like that so like they're finding ways and it's just 
I'm just really impressed with how creative. Cairo for birthday parties. I'm going to hire some stadium rock guy to <laughs> blow shit up for my eight-year-old. Jesus. <laughs> hire me. I'll come blow your house up. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Yeah, yeah so they're funny. doing a lot of cool stuff like that. That That's really, really <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So Jen, thank you so much. We, we, uh, you know, again, it's, yeah. you know, you, you bring a lot of talent. It's fun to talk to someone who's in sort of the same situation as us, but from a different area or a different location. So it's kind of cool to compare notes and see all that sort of uniqueness and some of the same stuff and all that stuff. So it's really, really cool to have you on. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, well, for thank sure. you for having me. You guys are awesome. And thank you for letting me be awkward. You guys made me a little feel comfortable. You were fine. You can't well, awkward. awkward. No. <laughs> hey, you did great. You, you killed great. it. <laughs> thank you. And we wish you the best thing in the future going forward, John. You as well. Both thank all you. of you all. <laughs> Thanks for watching part two of our interview with our guest, Jen Devereaux. We hope you enjoyed it. Check out a wide variety of other guests we have on our YouTube channel and on talesfromthepit.net. We'll see you next time.